Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a radio-controlled car using an ESP32 and a Flysky FSI6 transmitter. One of the cool features of this build is the ability to toggle the car's maximum speed using a switch on the transmitter. The car handles smooth curve movements very efficiently, making the driving experience much more responsive and enjoyable. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video. JLCPCB offers easy, affordable, and highly reliable PCB and PCBA services, empowering electronics engineers to bring their ideas to life quickly and professionally. Placing an order is super simple. I just uploaded my Gerber file to their website, selected the quantity and color options, and confirmed the order. You can get 5 high-quality PCBs for just $2. What's even better is that JLCPCB provides real-time tracking of the entire production process, so you always know exactly what stage your order is in. After a few days, the PCBs arrived at my doorstep, and the quality was excellent. If you're looking for a smooth and professional PCB manufacturing experience, JLCPCB is definitely the way to go. Now, move on to this project, we need an ESP32 board, a motor driver like L298N for low current motors or BTS7960 for high current motors, a Flysky FS-I6S transmitter and receiver, although any RC transmitter and receiver combo will work. We'll also need a T-connector, a buck converter module, a small breadboard, jumper wires, a 4WD car chassis, and a 7.4 volt lithium-ion battery pack. Let's understand how it works. The Flysky transmitter is used to send control signals wirelessly. These signals are received by a Flysky receiver and the ESP32 reads these PWM signals, processes them, and maps the values to appropriate motor control signals. Based on the processed values, the ESP32 generates two-directional PWM signals for each motor. These PWM signals are sent to motor drivers, which control the forward and reverse motion of two DC motors. Let's move on to the hardware assembly. First, connect the left and right motors in parallel so they rotate in the same direction when powered. Mount the ESP32 on a breadboard and attach it to the chassis. Then, install the L298N motor driver and connect the motor terminals to the motor output. Next, connect the T-connector and the input of the buck converter to the motor driver's power input, making sure the positive line goes to 12 volt and the negative to ground. Connect the battery and verify that both the motor driver and buck converter are receiving power. Now, set the buck module output to 5 volt and connect it to the ESP32's VIN and ground pins. After powering up the ESP32, connect three jumper wires to GPNO pins 34, 35, and 39. These will receive the PWM signals from the receiver. Connect the motor control pins from the ESP32 to the motor driver according to the pin mapping displayed on screen. Then, power the receiver by connecting its VCC and ground to the ESP32's VIN and ground pins. Connect channel 1 of the receiver to GPIO 35, channel 2 to GPIO 34, and channel 5 to GPIO 39 of the ESP32. Finally, reconnect the battery and confirm that all components are powered correctly. Now, go to your transmitter settings. Under AUX channel, assign the toggle switch A to channel 5. This will control the speed switch functionality. Also, disable channel mixing for channels 1 and 2. After that, connect the ESP32 to your computer via a USB cable to upload the program. For the coding part, open the Arduino IDE. Go to File Preferences and paste the ESP32 board URL into the Additional Board Manager section. Then go to the Board Manager, search for ESP32, and install version 2.0.11. Be aware that the code may not compile properly on newer versions. First, I'm uploading a test code to read the signal values from the transmitter. This code receives PWM signals from the receiver and displays the corresponding values in the serial monitor for verification. For channels 1 and 2, the signal values typically range from 1000 to 2000 where 1000 represents the minimum stick position and 2000 the maximum. The same logic applies to the toggle switch. When the switch is in the up position, the value is 1000, and when it's down, the value reads 2000. Finally, visit my GitHub link in the description to download the code for the L298 and motor driver and upload it to your ESP32. Copy and paste the code in Arduino IDE. The receiver inputs from the Flysky are connected to three pins on the ESP32. The right motor is connected via pins 27 and 26 while the left motor uses pins 25 and 33. Both motors have enabled pins as well, pin 14 for the right motor and pin 32 for the left. These pins are used to control speed through PWM. For that purpose, PWM channels 0 and 1 are configured and linked to the respective enable pins. Now, inside the setup function, we start serial communication for debugging and set the appropriate pin mode. We also configure the PWM channels using the LEDC setup function, setting a 1 kHz frequency and 8-bit resolution. 
Moving on to the loop function, we continuously read the PWM signals from the receiver using the pulse in function. If the values fall outside the expected range of 1000 to 2000 microseconds, the system assumes the transmitter is off or disconnected and stops the motors as a safety precaution. Next, we handle the speed toggle functionality. If the channel 5 value is below 1500 microseconds, we run the motors at full speed. If it's above, we reduce the speed by setting a multiplier to 0.5, effectively running the system at half speed. The channel inputs from the joystick are then mapped to a range of minus 255 to 255, giving us full analog control over speed and direction. A deadband is applied to filter out minor fluctuations or noise in the joystick signal. We then apply a motor mixing algorithm. If the joystick is pushed significantly backward, indicated by Y less than minus 150, we modify the mixing logic slightly to allow better turning control in reverse. Otherwise, a standard differential drive mixing formula is used to determine the speed of each motor, enabling forward, backward, and turning motions. To ensure safety and control, the motor speed values are constrained between minus 255 and 255. We then call a helper function named setMotor to apply these speed. This function sets the direction pins and writes the appropriate PWM value to the enable channel based on whether the speed is positive, negative, or zero. Finally, we have the stop motors function, which simply calls setMotor with zero speed for both sides. Select board import from the tools option and upload the code in the ESP32. Now let's put the system to the test. Everything is functioning as expected. I'll also show how the speed mode can be toggled directly from the transmitter using a switch, giving you precise control over the robot's speed in real time. Next, I demonstrated the setup using the BTS7960 motor driver. The complete circuit diagram will be included in the project files. To proceed, head over to my GitHub repository, download the BTS7960 specific code, and upload it to your ESP32. So everything is functioning as expected. If you have any query, then feel free to ask in the comments section. Thank you for watching the full video.